You're on the right track. You're going to be a football player when you grow up? <laughs> From the age of three, he knew his destiny to be a great football player. He could be the best quarterback of his generation. So why is everyone asking the same question? Will Peyton Manning ever win a playoff game? The ball is intercepted. Both, they're just getting overpowered. Picked off. And that's the story of the ball game. This is awful. This has been an absolute embarrassment. I always feel very responsible when we do not win. In the way now for Manning, Clinton Portis and the determined Denver Broncos. Two weeks ago, the Colts were dominated by Denver. Today, round two. Oh, what a play! Unbelievable! Man! Football legacies are often defined by postseason success. Today will be Manning's fourth attempt to secure his own. Here's the throw. Into the end zone. Touchdown! While the Broncos hope the answer remains no to the question, can Peyton win? The postseason rolls on from the RCA Dome in Indianapolis. Will it be the Broncos or the Colts who join Tennessee, Carolina, and Green Bay in postseason action next week? We'll find out. The kickoff is next. All day today, baby. We're going to have us a good time. All we got to do right here is run that right into their mouth every play. That's all we got to do. They're going to get it. That's what they're going to get today. A whole lot of bump bumps. Come on, baby. Come on, baby, that's all we need to do. Thump, thump time. Let's go. <laughs> A whole lot of The place is full of Colts fans hungry for a playoff victory. Down to the sideline, and Armand Katay and Armand. Thank you, Greg. Well, to a man, the Colts told us they were manhandled, flat out physically whipped by the Broncos the last time out, particularly defensive end Trevor Price, who told us, not surprisingly, last night, they might as well put a different helmet on this Colts team because we are going to see an entirely different team. One as amped up as any football team can be. Well, how do the Broncos deal with it? Very simply, Rod Smith told me before the game, the exact same way we dealt with it before, be physical. Greg? All right, Armin, thank you. Mike Shanahan commandeered two Denver Super Bowls in his ninth year as head coach. On the near side of the field is Tony Dungy. His second playoff appearance in two years as the head coach here in Indianapolis. The Colts have won the toss. They have elected to receive. Deep are number 33, Dominique Rhodes, and number 35, Ricky Williams. That's Micah Noor getting set to kick it away two weeks ago and out to about the 30-yard line before he is brought down. And on to the field comes Peyton Manning. You hear all of the questions. He is the co-MVP, along with Steve McNair of the National Football League this season. The Colts looking for improvement up front. Start Tupe Pico, the second-year lineman out of Michigan State. And Indy will look to Pro Bowl receiver Marvin Harrison for big plays today. He had six catches for 85 yards in the last meeting with Denver, but no touchdowns. Pete to throw. He throws short, and that is complete to Edron James out of the backfield. The Broncos 4-3 defense. Trevor Price having an outstanding season. One of three Denver D linemen with at least eight sacks. Middle linebacker Al Wilson is Denver's leading tackler. And in the secondary, Kelly Herndon back in the lineup at cornerback playing with a cast to protect two broken bones in his left hand. This is a second and six. Contey had said before the game, the Colts and Peyton Manning told us on Friday, the plan we had against the Broncos was fine. They just beat us physically. Peyton Manning said, we must run the football well to make them cover us one-on-one -on -one outside so I can throw the football down the field. Play fake. Manning to James again. James, midfield, diving forward close to the Denver 45-yard line, and that'll be another Colt first down. Now, we all saw the last game these two teams played a couple weeks ago, and Denver just dominated physically. One way to change it today, and you're seeing it right now, the Colts get the ball first. They have a chance to establish the momentum on their side, get their offense clicking, get it in rhythm before Denver gets the football. Down will 
Give to James, and James not much there across the 45, close to the 44-yard line. One of the big stories of the previous meeting between these two clubs, time of possession out of a 60-minute game. The Colts had their hands on the ball for 15 minutes and two seconds and just 37 offensive plays the entire game. Uh, that's right, Greg. That's a, that is a big problem when the offense is the focal point of your team. And when you hear about establishing a run, you do that so defenders crowd the line of scrimmage so it's easier to throw the football outside. On the blitz, quick pass outside. Edwin James has a first down. has all the yardage so far here today. These were the Colts against Denver back in week 16. Hard to put up good numbers when the other team is running the football extremely well against you. At that time, the Denver Broncos blitzed. They dropped the defensive lineman, Darius Holland, out into pass coverage. Peyton Manning saw it, took advantage of it. They did not do that in the last game two weeks ago. 39 yards of offense for the Colts, and all of them attributed to Edger and James, and Dominique Rhodes is now in the backfield. First down. But Tony Dungy was smiling a few moments ago, and that's why the first touchdown his team has scored in the last five games. A Brandon Stokely touchdown catch of 31 yards, and the Colts are on top. Ruben Drones is deep for Denver. Drones from the two. And knocked out of bounds. Just across the 20-yard line. Let's go back to the touchdown play. Well, a couple things happen on this play. Watch the safeties come up to help in the running play. And when you do that, it allows Brandon Stokely to go across the field. Now there's not a safety back there to tackle him to keep him from scoring a touchdown. You saw Kelly Herndon try to bump him at the line, and we mentioned earlier, Kelly Herndon is wearing a cast on his left hand to protect two broken bones. It definitely hurt him on that play, holding up the receiver. Five wide receivers for Denver. Portis, running room, this side, across the 30, lost the football, and it rolled out of bounds. Walt Harris with the hit. Denver's offensive line. They'll give him help whenever they can, but basically Ephraim Salam will have responsibility for keeping Dwight Freeney off of Jake Plummer. And Clinton Portis, the outstanding running back, back into the lineup after missing a few games with an ankle sprain. Well, there appears to be a question as to whether or not this is a first down now, and we're going to measure. Our referee today is Johnny Greer. Well, one way to take the crowd noise out of this game is for the Denver Broncos to do what they did two weeks ago. Run that football. Take the emotion out of the Colts team and especially out of the crowd. It is just a little short.
Walt Harris knocked that football loose. And you could see some of the frustration along the Colts sideline as that ball rolled out of bounds. The first fumble by Clinton Portis since the Ice Age. Well, it was interesting, Greg, talking to Tony Dungy about the game. He says, we're not, it's okay if Clinton Portis runs for 125 yards as long as one's not a real long touchdown run. We want to get Jake Plummer in third down passing situations and then get after him and get off the field. This is Quentin Griffin into the backfield. And he'll get the handoff and try the left side and get the first down. Out too close to the 40-yard line, and it will be a first down for Denver. A look at the Colt defense. The Colts will look to Pro Bowl defensive end Dwight Freeney to disrupt Jake Plummer in the pocket. 11 sacks on the season. Linebacker David Thornton makes more tackles than any other Colt. And Donald Strickland starts at safety in place of Mike Doss, who sprained an ankle two weeks ago against these same Broncos. There's Ron Meeks, the defensive coordinator for Indianapolis. Again, the field is spread. Plummer's first pass of the day over the middle, Shannon Sharp across the 45 to about the 47-yard line. Well, we talked about a little bit in the pregame. Jake Plummer, don't let him have open space in front of him. And that, especially on that rush, all four defensive linemen stayed in their lane. They're going to make Jake Plummer stand back there, try to get into his face, where if he can't see real well down the field, maybe he'll make a mistake. Second and one. Straight ahead, Portis to midfield and a first down. Well, there was universal agreement among both teams as to what happened the last time these teams met. Both the Broncos said it and the Colts said it. The Broncos physically whipped the Indianapolis Colts. There was also a universal agreement among the Denver Colts that they weren't going to see the same football team again here today. Oh, yeah, you mean the Denver Broncos. Yes, they talked about it. They knew this was going to be an entirely different game. The Denver Broncos are going to continue to bring in both running backs, keep them fresh, and keep running the football hard. Portis and Griffin in the backfield. Griffin now behind Plummer, who will throw. The screen. Griffin, 45, to about the 43-yard line. When you watch Quentin Griffin in this football game, so good in open space, he really had a coming out party a couple of weeks ago. He's so fast, so quick. He made a lot of defenders miss when they played two weeks ago. And because of that game and the way he played last week in Green Bay, he has earned a right to get some carries in this game, and that's why you're going to see him quite a bit. You saw his numbers two weeks ago. 28 carries for 136 yards, second and three. The pitch for Portis, left side. Oh, what a play by David Thornton. Loss of two, and it'll be third and five. The Colts defense, it is known for its speed. So when you go outside, I think you're kind of playing in their hands when it goes too wide. What you want to do is get them up the field and run inside. Coming up on eight minutes to play in the first quarter, and we look at the first third down of the day. Can the Broncos hear the call in the huddle? Plummer over the middle to the 40-yard line, and that's Shannon Sharp fighting for first down yardage. And he's going to be a little short. I think you read Mike Shanahan's lips. They will definitely go for it on fourth down here. He said something interesting to us, I thought, last night, Greg, when we talked to him. He says, if you think you can come into Indianapolis with the crowd noise and their pass rush and drop back and just throw the football continuously, you have no chance. So when they do throw, it's going to be a lot of quick drops 
Get rid of the football as fast as you can. Portis and Drones are the running back. They go with a double tight end and Sharp and Carswell. Plummer with the keeper. And from that placement, Johnny Greer says there is a first down. With this crowd noise, because it is loud, and I hope you can hear it at home because I can hear it here. With this crowd noise in situations like that, you do not want to have to time out the snap to give it to a running back. Your quarterback is athletic. Let him run the quarterback sneak. First down at the Colt 39. Portis. No gain on the play. Marcus Washington led the defensive charge. It'll be second and ten. They are just flying to the line of scrimmage. This Colts defense, as soon as they even think it's a running play, the linebackers and safeties are coming up to make the tackle. That just leaves them a little, well, vulnerable for a play action pass and a, and you got to know they're being covered to wide receivers one on one on the outside 10th play of this drive penalty markers fly Portis nothing much there we have markers on both sides of the field and the first indication is offside that's a big penalty it was going to be third and nine or third and ten. Something they did not do well in getting the Broncos in those situations. Offside, 96, defense, lined up in the neutral zone. Still second down. You know, Phil, we talk about this noise level. I thought it was interesting talking to Jake Plummer. Last night he says he lets the team in the huddle know what the check is in case they change the play and even if they don't hear him they, they know, know what it is they know what it is that's right if they know they get the body language that the play is being changed he's already told them in the huddle what that change is going to be plumber throws complete and drones is hit almost immediately as he grabs the ball by david thornton it'll be third and five Monty Rager is in on the pressure on Jake Plummer a few times the last game when they did get in situations where he held the ball just a little too long. They got good hits on Jake Plummer. And that's what you want to do. Make him look around the field for the open receiver. And if you make him hold it a second longer, one of these pass rushes will get to him. Monte Rager, a second round draft pick of Denver back in 99. Quick pass out to the side, and that's complete. Rod Smith tripped up before he got to the 30-yard line. It'll be marked short of a first down. The Broncos definitely had the right play on. It was a blitz from the right side. They got the Colts outnumbered, but the Colts, because of the hustle on the defense, stopped the play for the first down. David Macklin tripped him up, and now here is Jason Elam to attempt one from 49 yards out. On its way. And the kick is good. The Broncos get a field goal and pull to within 7-3. to 3.41 to play in the first. Back in Indianapolis, Greg Gumbel, Phil Sims, Armin Kotean, 3.41 to play in the first quarter and a 7-3 Indianapolis lead. Jason Elam's 49-yard field goal. We have two of the very best field goal kickers competing in this game. Mike Knorr with the kickoff. This is short. On the run at the 13-yard line is Dominique Rhodes. Rhodes bursting through. Penalty markers fly as he is pulled to a stop at about the 33-yard line and then forward to about the 35. You know, now let's check the flag. That's right. You know, you go back to that drive by the Denver Broncos. That was really very good game management by Mike Shanahan because the noise, Holding the emotion. Number 34, the receiving team during the return. 
running the football really settled it down for the Denver Broncos. Jason Doring, the guilty party on the penalty. The field goal goes through the uprights. Rod Smith says, we're on the board. Manning and the Colts from their own 19-yard line, first down. And straight ahead is Edron James, and James out across the 20 to the 23. These Colts come in here feeling so good about themselves. Peyton Manning told us that practice on Friday, the ball never touched the ground. Ah, uh, no, that's, that's, and also on Friday, because Denver did some different things to them in that game two weeks ago. They let Tony Dungy be the defensive coordinator against them. It says, do whatever you want, see if we can handle it. Manning throwing far side of the field. Marvin Harrison, his first catch to the 35 and a first down. Something they did not get much of in the first game. Space to the wide receivers on the outside. Good recognition by Marvin Harrison. Excellent job by Peyton Manning. Knowing where to go to the weak spot of the defense. That's outside the numbers. From the 35-yard line on the ground, Edger and James right side. And through the right side, to close to the 40-yard line. Now you watch this. No huddle or the muddle huddle, whatever you want to call it by the Indianapolis Colts. When we were talking to Peyton Manning, he says, look, when I play the game, I like to dictate what's going on. And I, he goes, I know that Denver thinks they dictated to me the last time we played. And he just kind of made a point of like, I'm going to control a little better this time around. He got rid of it to the far side and Marvin Harrison, the intended receiver, overthrown and his good friends back there all over Peyton Manning. That's Trevor Price. It is hard to sack Peyton Manning. It's just as hard to even hit him. Trevor Price, by his own account, knocked him down at least four or five times two weeks ago. And I see the, the Colts, they have Tupe Pico at center, and they have Jeff Saturday at right guard, and I'm sure that's the reason why to block Trevor Price. Third and five. Quick slant, and that's complete for a first down across midfield to Harrison. Peyton Manning just gets the football too fast to, to Marvin Harrison before the safeties can react and come up. Kanoi Kennedy sees it, but he can't get there quick enough to get to Marvin Harrison. Interesting talking to Manning. I asked him what happens the second time around when teams play each other in some, such short notice. He feels the defense has the advantage. I think he's right. They're familiar with your speed. Lost the football and Manning fell on it. You know, Greg, it just takes a lot of the guesswork away from you. And you're right. You're making the signal to me. The snap. Jeff Saturday has been Peyton Manning center for quite a few years over the, you know, four straight years, I think. Pico doesn't quite get it up there. Manning does the right thing. Fall right on it. Tupe Pico, a second-year man out of Michigan State. Straight ahead. James. To about the 46-yard line of the Denver Broncos, Al Wilson and Jay Sean Sykes converge for the stop. You know, I thought it was interesting, too, as we watch this game go along, getting the football to Marvin Harrison. Marvin Harrison said to us he would come up to the line of scrimmage. He would try to read the coverage. He'd look down the field. And the safety had his eyes on him, never looked at the quarterback, the running backs. All they did was look at him to get the double teams when they could. Colts with their package of four wide receivers and the running back in the game. Manning throwing over the middle. Nice catch at the 30-yard line by Harrison. Harrison doesn't feel he's been touched on his way to the end zone. Touchdown. gap that is by the Bronco defense. The Broncos are going to argue about who has who on this pass. Marvin Harrison catches it. Is he touched? No, he is not. You can see the Broncos are all talking to each other. Very alert. If you don't hear the whistle, keep playing. And Mike Shanahan does not challenge. He knows it. Vander Jack's extra point is good. Marvin Harrison registers the first touchdown in the postseason of his great career. 14-3 Colts. 
Who has Marvin Harrison? Watch what they do after he lays on the ground. Nobody gets close to him. Look at the conference they're having over there. Very alert by Marvin Harrison. He can feel that nobody has touched him while he's on the ground. That will not make Mike Shanahan a happy man. Well, Al Wilson is close, but he's upset again. They're all upset about who was supposed to. 37 yard line. 33 yard return. Peyton Manning looking an awful lot like a quarterback looking to get the playoff monkey off his back. Peyton Manning on the phone. Look at his numbers. Portis. In the backfield. Plummer will throw. This is Drones. And Drones is wrapped up. 37, maybe the 38-yard line, and I think you can safely assume that the Colts are out to gang tackle today. Time winds down on the first 15 minutes of play. We're coming back to the RCA Dome in Indianapolis right after this. Colts lead at 14-3. You're watching the NFL on CBS. And the Colts have been dominant. It's second and nine. Plummer throws out here to Rod Smith. Smith can't get away. The first man to hit him was Marcus Washington, number 53. Marcus Washington is really having a terrific start to this game. He's inside, he's athletic, he's fast, and those short, quick passes to the outside, he is the first defender to get there to make the hits. You know how I hate to give you credit, but when we were watching film of the last time these teams played, even though the Colts were dominated, you said their defense was flying all over the field. They were. They were just a little too much out of control. 36. Plummer on the move. 45. Sliding at midfield. There's a marker down on the far side, and now an extra marker is down. A marker flew on the far side of the field during the play, and then at the conclusion, Johnny Greer threw his flag, and now he'll explain. We have two fouls on the defense. Offside, number 90, lined up in the neutral zone. It's declined. Personal foul, late hit on the defense, will be accepted. First down. Monte Rager, number 90. Right in the middle was offside. And then there is Nick Harper with the diving hit on Jake Plummer as he slid down. Well, he goes helmet to helmet to the quarterback. But anytime a quarterback slides feet first, he has given up. And once he does that, you cannot hit him as a defensive player. So now the Broncos find themselves at the Indianapolis 34. Portis trying to turn the corner and doesn't do it. We have another marker down. 27, David Macklin rode him out of bounds. And this one will go against Denver. You know, Greg, I want to go back to that third down with Jake Plummer. Holding, 62, offense. Good first down. When he escaped right up the middle, the Colts, Tony Dungy, made it a big point. Let's keep, he, let's keep people in his face. If he runs sideways, big deal. We can chase him down. We're a lot faster than he is. You've got to stay disciplined on the defensive line, keep him in the pocket, and make him throw it down the field. First Denver penalty of the day. It's first and 20. Play fake. Plummer on the move, throws, and that's complete to Drones, and Drones just inside the 35-yard line. And back to almost the original line of scrimmage. You always wonder, and I always wondered myself, why, how come when the Denver Broncos run these play-action fakes that Jake Plummer can run with nobody around him and the receiver is wide open? Well, Mike Shanahan said if the look is not perfect, the quarterback 
calls off that play and we just run the football. Mike Shanahan also told us he ran a minimum of those plays against these Colts the first time they met in anticipation of meeting them again in the postseason. Portis stops and starts. Marker is down as he's brought down close to the 30-yard line. Drees, Bashir, Donald Strickland with the stop. Boy, this crowd is unbelievable. I kind of wish they'd settle down a little myself. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm sitting in the middle of the crowd. Holding, 62, offense. Still second down. Second penalty of the day on Denver. Both penalties on Dan Neal and lost in the euphoria of that dominance by Denver two weeks ago. The Broncos committed 11 penalties for 93 yards. Didn't make much difference the way they owned the game. Two holding penalties on Denver now in the last three plays. It's second and 20. Plummer steps up, throws, and his receiver fell down on the route. That was number 85, Ashley Lalee. One thing the Denver Broncos are not going to let happen today, passing situations, make sure you take care of Dwight Freeney. Shannon Sharks blocking him. Dwayne Carswell is helping him out. When they can, they will double team him. First incomplete pass of the day for Plummer, who is 8 for 9 now, but for only 38 yards. Third and long. Sharp. Hit immediately at the 40-yard line by David Thornton. Micah Knorr will come on to punt. Troy Walters will be deep for Indianapolis. Nor with the seventh best number punting the football in the NFL during the regular season. Into the end zone. The Colts and Manning will start at their own 20-yard line when we come back. Into the playoffs in the Super Bowl. It's all at NFL.com or at NFL on AOL. I wrote about you this past week, Greg. Can't wait to read it. From the 20, Manning, play fake. Throwing. Has a man open. It's Marcus Pollard. And Pollard fumbled it out of bounds. But it'll be a first down all the way out to the 45-yard line. What a throw by Peyton Manning. On the run, falling away from the line of scrimmage, and he puts just the right touch in getting the football to Marcus Pollard. He's coming up the left side of your screen. It's a dangerous throw in between two defenders, and so many things go unnoticed about Peyton Manning, about him physically. He moves around better than people give him credit for. He's tall. He throws over top of defenders, and he's tough, too. Edron James midfield and into Denver territory to the 47-yard line. We check in with Armin. Thank you, Greg. You know, I've been watching Mike Shanahan from the sidelines for six years now, and after that last coach touchdown, that was as upset as I have ever seen him. He went to Al Wilson and Lenny Walls not once but twice and told them in no uncertain terms it was time to get their act in gear. Well, let's see if they can do it. So far, it doesn't appear like they're doing a real good job. Back to you. All right, Armin. Here's James again. Tries to dip to the outside, and this time there's nothing doing as he's wrestled down. Lenny Walls, the tallest cornerback in the National Football League at 6'4". You know, Greg, one of the key matchups. You know, this is a big move. Jeff Saturday switching from center to take care of the best defensive lineman that the Denver Broncos have and Trevor Price, and so far he's doing a very good job. Again, and mainly it's to stop the pressure that Trevor Price creates in passing situations. Manning with time.
and then throws complete. And James is wrapped up at the 45 by Jayshon Sykes. You know, Trevor Price said two weeks ago, I sacked Peyton Manning twice, and I was lucky. Yeah, I was lucky. He said, hey, he goes, he, he said something interesting. He said, Peyton Manning is too proud to let you sack him. And I just thought, boy, he's right. He, he takes everything personal. He wants to be the best at, at every aspect there, there is about being a quarterback, and one of them is not taking sacks. On second and nine, Edger and James up the middle inside the 40 to about the 37-yard line, and that'll be about two yards shy of a first down. Price and Spragan on the stop there. It'll be third and two. Now that they're in rhythm on offense, this Indianapolis Colts team, when they were not stopping the Denver Broncos two weeks ago, they were impatient on offense, trying to hit the big play. Today, so far, when it's not there, Peyton Manning throwing short passes, not getting much yards at him, but getting a few positive ones. Edron James, 70 total yards, goes to the sideline. Dominique Rhodes is behind Manning. Manning over the middle, and that's complete to Stokely. Stokely breaks a tackle. 30, 25, inside the 25. It'll be first down for the Colts. Peyton Manning likes Brandon Stokely as a receiver because he says he's tough, and once he catches the ball, he will go up the field and fight for the extra yards. And when you're playing a defense like Denver, two extra yards creates a lot better situations for your offense a lot of times. Denver had the perfect defense on and still did not stop the play. This is Dominique Rhodes, and Rhodes maybe a yard or so. Reggie Hayward on the stop you have when you have Marcus Pollard at tight end Marvin Harrison at wide receiver Reggie Wayne then you have Brandon Stokely who comes in Edron James in the backfield that is a lot of weapons to try to stop from the defensive side and today the Colts getting the football to every one of them James and Rhodes are now in the backfield with Manning on second and nine Manning going this side, wide open, touchdown! Marvin Harrison! That is too much to ask when you say to a safety, Sam Brandon is going to have to cover him up the field. Manning recognizes it and makes the perfect throw to Marvin Harrison. Vanderjet for the extra point. 83 regular season touchdowns. Harrison registers his first two postseason TD catches today. Seven twenty-eight to play, first half. The Colts has charged up, as you will see, any football team. They, just like we talked about at the top of the show, they're loose, confident, and aggressive. Something a little different on this kickoff. This is Drones taking it just across the 10-yard line. Dancing his way across the 25 and then buried by the Colt pursuit first meeting between these teams the Colts ran just 37 offensive plays they've got 22 already today and lead it 21 to 3. Denver from their own 27 Portis right side room to run close to a first down Dwight Freeney with the stop let's go back to the TD well here's Marvin Harrison watch Lenny Walls he doesn't even touch him and then Sam Brandon, look at all the space he has to deal with in covering Marvin Harrison down the field. Too much to ask of a safety, not a good job by Lenny Walls or many of the players on the defensive side. Peyton Manning, a Colts playoff record. Remember Mike Shanahan last night said, our key to this game, can we keep Peyton from having a big day? So far, no go. Portis again on the right side to about the 43. 
Well, Greg, it goes back to what we heard when we talked to all the Colts on Friday. They said, look, we had a terrific plan. It worked great during practice two weeks ago, but we just got beat physically. So now they, they got an education. They know what to expect. They knew they had to raise the level as far as going out there and just competing. And so far today, they have done that. Portis and Griffin are two of the wide receivers set out. Plummer over the middle. Tip. Incomplete. Rob Morris got his hands on it. Jake Plummer drops back. What well, all he has to do is look at Rob Morris. He's the only defender that can really stop that pass. Rob Morris showing that he was alert. He was looking for the weak side receiver going across the middle. That's where he was. Almost makes the interception. Morris and Washington now come off the field. Extra DBs on for the Colts on third and five. Denver was a terror on third down two weeks ago. And Plummer converts here on the pass to the tight end, Carswell. Just across midfield and into Indianapolis territory, first down Denver. Boy, the one thing I'm noticing, though, they are definitely overall staying in front of Jake Plummer more and better than they did the last time they played. But Jake Plummer showing you that given space and given time, he can throw it, he can be a pocket quarterback and throw it down the football field with accuracy, too. Carswell makes his first catch in five games, and it's good for a first down. Plummer on the quarterback draw. 45 and sliding to the 42. That's a seven yard pickup, second and three. You don't see the quarterback draw run too many times on first downs. But Denver spreading out the Colts defense. Mike Shanahan sitting on the sideline going, nobody's looking at the quarterback. So spread him out, let him pick up a seven yards. Good first down for the Denver Broncos. Coming up on four and a half minutes to play in the first half. This is Portis. And he snakes inside the 40 to the 36 or 37 yard line, but that'll be another Denver first down. Donald Strickland coming up from the safety spot for the tackle. Clinton Portis has been out of action for a few weeks, but he looks pretty sharp. Greg, you talked about it. Has the injuries, nothing's bothered him. He feels 100%, and he's rested. He's on AstroTurf indoors. He had 10 100-yard games this season, and averaged an amazing five and a half yards a carry. Plummer throwing into the flat, complete to sharp, and there's a penalty marker down. This play will come back. Mike Shanahan, none too pleased. No, it's... Personal foul, shot block, number 62, offense. Still first down. What that means is somebody is blocking a defensive lineman, and they have contact. And Dan Neal, number 62, goes down below the waist and hits the engaged defensive player. There it is on the right side. They're engaged, and he went down low on Raheem Brock, and that is a personal foul. Hey, Dan Neal may take his own personal penalty flag to the locker room with him. That's three on him in this first half. First and 25. Portis, right side. To the 47. And we come up on three minutes to play. It'll be second and 21. Well, Denver's, they're having success. They're executing a lot of plays. The only thing that's really putting them in tough situations, the penalties. 
But when you're playing a fast, aggressive defensive front, you're just going to have penalties by the offensive line, especially when you're on the road and dealing with this crowd noise. Plummer, that's bad down. Robert Mathis, a truly amazing defensive lineman. Three and a half sacks on the season. He's a rookie, the fifth round draft pick, and doesn't weigh more than 235 pounds. Yeah, but he plays on the outside. He is a very good pass rusher. And you can see why he's so athletic, recognizes the play, and has the ability to jump up and knock the football down. Plummer needs the 26-yard line for a first down. Portis had it and dropped it. Freeney and Blake Brockemeyer doing a little talking. Well, there's really nobody open down the field. Jake Plummer, good, smart decision. Throw it short. Dwight Freeney, the best pass rusher. Clinton Portis getting a little piece of him before he goes out on the pass route. And Brockemeyer getting a lot of him while he's flat on his back. Troy Walters deep for the punt. Sends this one high. And a nice play down deep by number 23, Willie Middlebrooks. But we have a penalty marker back upfield. And all indications are it's going to come back. Well, it was a fourth and 21. Holding number 38 of the kicking team prior to the kick. We're penalized 10 yards and re-kick fourth down. Another Denver penalty. And that'll nullify a pretty nice special teams play by Middlebrooks down inside the five-yard line. So Knorr will now get this kick away somewhere between his own 30 and 35 yard line. Denver now four penalties for 45 yards. Takes a Denver bounce. Terrific Denver bounce and comes to a stop at about the 12 yard line. 2-0-1 to play in the first half. 44-yard punt. We'll be back. How do you explain such a turnaround in two weeks? Well, there's a lot of ways. Yeah, this is, this is one big reason why Peyton Manning, given time, gets the football. Co-MVP of the National Football League. He knows what to do. Down the middle, Stokely! 40, 30, nobody catches him! Touchdown, Indianapolis! Unbelievable.
Greg, you talk about being aggressive in your play, the play calling, the way you're approaching the game. That describes the Colts in the first half. Vanderjack's kick is good. Brandon Stokely, two touchdown catches today, 131 yards total, and it's the Colts running rough shot today, 28-3. Colts longest touchdown in postseason history. Manning to Stokely, five yard line. The Denver Broncos are expecting run. Brandon Stokely gets right down the middle of the field before any Bronco defender can even react to him. He has outstanding speed. If you remember three years ago as a Baltimore Raven, he caught a touchdown pass in the Super Bowl against the Giants. He's been hurt some this year, but when he's been healthy, Frank, we've heard it. Peyton Manning thinks he is a terrific third receiver from the slot position. We just saw how what why he is. Clark from the shotgun. With time, throws. Rod Smith has it. 35-40. And up to the 44, nice burst of speed from Rod Smith. He looks like he had the week off last week. Yeah, a lot of these Broncos had the week off last week, but it's not helping them so far. We get movement up front. Number 90, Monty Rager. And number 62, Dan Neal. The defense did move first. They were in the neutral zone, I thought. Yeah. Neutral zone interaction. Number 90, defense. Still first down. Mentioned earlier, Monty Rager was Denver's second round draft pick back in 1999. He played from 99 until 2002 season with the Broncos before arriving here in Indianapolis as a free agent. Look at the total yards. Plummer throws far side and that's complete and out of bounds to Charlie Adams. The first year free agent man out of Hofstra. Well I guess it goes without saying this is a big series for this Denver Broncos offense. They need to get some points. Even if it's a, a field goal, that would get them within three scores and give them some confidence going into the locker room. Second and one. Plummer with the clip over the middle, and that is complete to number 89, Carswell. And a timeout is called. Carswell, affectionately referred to by Shannon Sharp as House. Denver uses its first timeout. Of highlights of today's NFL action, and Chiefs head coach Dick Vermeil joins him from Kansas City. Coming up, the Nextel halftime report. Coach Vermeil's in here taking notes. I advise him not to share them, though, with the guys he's sitting with. First and ten. Plummer. There's a marker down on the far side as Carswell makes his third catch of the day. And let's see what this one's about. Offside. 93. Defense. We'll penalize five yards, still first down. Well, that's the third time a defensive lineman has been offside. This time it's Dwight Freeney. Well, they're so anxious to get to the quarterback in obvious passing situations. Dwight Freeney just lined up offside. So now it's a first and five, a minute four to play. Plummer down the sideline. Intercepted. Macklin, 35. Close to the 40-yard line.
This time, the Colts did what they wanted to do. They put pressure in Jake Plummer's face. He really can't step into the throw. And because of that, it comes up about four or five yards short. And David Macklin, look at the ball wobbling, does a terrific job going up and getting the football. If Macklin didn't get this interception, Drees Bashir would have. Absolutely. But that was a good shot. Pressure the quarterback when they can't step up. It takes some power and velocity off the football. 55 seconds to play. Manning. Sideline. Harrison to the 40 and looks out of bounds. Tom Moore, the offensive coordinator, has got a very good feel for what's going to work. He's given those plays to his quarterback, and they are taking advantage of every situation. Marvin Harrison, so tough in the open field. Fakes like he's going inside, still able to get out of bounds. Harrison had six catches for 85 yards the first time they met two weeks ago. He's got 111 yards and a couple of touchdowns here in the first half. Manning over the middle. Harrison inside the 25. 40 seconds. And a timeout. Denver with one timeout remaining, looking to put more points on the board before the break. Manning, short pop to Edron James inside the 20-yard line, still on his feet, and Boo moves to about the 16-yard line. Clock stops with 28 seconds to play, and we'll take another break as the Colts work their way to the end zone. And two touchdowns, that's a tough outing for a whole day, let alone a first half. Yeah, it is. What a turnaround. This tells you about the pride of professional athletes, about the Indianapolis Colts, how well they have come out here in the first half and played. Quick pass, Reggie Wayne. Wayne to the 10 and knocked down there. 21, 20 seconds. Clock continues to move. Oh, and they're down in the end zone. Manning trying to get his players back to the line of scrimmage. The offensive line down there pushing and shoving with some Broncos. Get ready. Manning pump fakes one way, looks to the other. Caught! No! Incomplete. What a pass and what a grab by Stokely. And Manning is chewing out his lineman. Yes, and rightly so. They lost contact with the situation. And it almost cost him a chance to even get a field goal attempt here at the end of the first half. But Brandon Stokely clearly out of bounds in the back of the end zone. So on comes Vanderjack. Author of an NFL record. 41 straight field goals during the regular season. This one from 27 yards out. Automatic. The Colts close out the first half to the delight of their fans with more points on the board. Let's go down to Armin. Greg, Coach, I know it's only the first half, but is this as good physically, emotionally, and mentally as a Colts team has ever played for you? It is. We've played well. Peyton's been hot. Our crowd's into it. So we got to play 30 more minutes just like this. Well, you're playing great right now. Thank you. Greg. That may be the challenge. That's the end of our first half. The Colts 31, the Broncos 3. We're back with the next Nextel Halftime Report after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Broncos get their hands on the football first. This is drones from the nine-yard line, 25. Hit at the 30 and falls forward to about the 32. Two weeks ago, it was a completely different story. In week 16, the Colts had 27 rushing yards to 42, but look at the passing yards, the total yards, third down conversion, and Denver's total yardage. Now you're talking about a defense. The Denver Broncos ranked fourth overall in the National Football League, so. 
under no circumstances would you think they would be that dominated. And Plummer is going to start by giving it to Griffin. And Griffin out close to the 40-yard line. Let's check in downstairs with Armin Katayan. Armin. Greg, a very somber and silent Broncos team exiting the locker room. And I'll give you the PG version of what Mike Shanahan basically told him. He said, hey, we're back to 0-0, square one here. He said Peyton is doing an unbelievable job of executing. But he said we just have to play smarter, faster, and better and hope for the best. Back to you. They'll start from the 39. After Griffin's run of seven yards, and it's second and three. And Plummer going to throw and hits his man. And almost breaking free is Rod Smith inside the 30-yard line. 33 yards, and it was a f just an inch closer to being much more. Well, something we did not see in the first half is Jake Plummer really taking shots down the field, except for the last drive. But... Rod Smith gets between the safeties, down the field, and a perfect throw by Jake Plummer. Boy, Dries Brashear got a hand on him, made him stagger a bit. First down from the 27. The screen to Portis. Penalty marker is down as Portis is dragged down inside the 20-yard line. And let's check the flag. Who do you think it's against? Another Broncos penalty. I see Dan Neal played this case. 62 offense. Still first down. That's four penalties on Neal by my count today. Well, the Denver Broncos trying to take advantage of the fact that the Indianapolis Colts defensive line trying to get up the field to get to the quarterback. You take advantage of that by throwing screens and draws, but every time they try it, they create a penalty. First and 20. Plummer running out of time, throws it out here to Portis. Inside the 30 to about the 27-yard line, and Walt Harris made the stop there. Boy, really good decision by Jake Plummer. Look down the field. If it's not there, don't look too long because he just avoids disaster, a sack, and a fumble. Chad Brasky is coming right up from behind. So look down the field. If it's not there, throw it to the short receiver as fast as you can. So they get the yardage lost on the penalty back, and it's second and ten. Portis around the block from Mike Anderson inside the 25 to the 23. Well, when you look at this, Greg, we talk about the second half. The room for error for the Broncos is none. They can't turn the football over. They got to take advantage of every single situation. And here's one of those situations right now. Third and six. They need it desperately. This is the deepest the Broncos have ventured today into Indianapolis territory. Plummer. And is going to go down. Monty Rager. The Colts talk so much about how they wanted to make Jake Plummer hold the football just a little longer. This time, they're all around him. He can't see down the field. And then he can't get away from all the defensive linemen rushing the quarterback. This is a 46-yard attempt by Jason Elam. Blocked as it got underway, and it rolls into the end zone. Raheem Brock, number 79, got his hand on the Elam field goal attempt. And Indianapolis with the ball now at about the 35-yard line. 
Manning with the ball. Throws this side, Reggie Wayne. And Wayne is brought down by Kelly Herndon to about 44. It'll be a pickup of eight, second and two. Well, Greg, we saw the, the Broncos in offense throw the football a little more than they probably wanted to. In the very first play of the second half, they come out, they blitz Peyton Manning. It's going to make it very hard for the corners to cover these wide receivers if they continue to blitz. On second and two, Edger and James for a first down to midfield. The first half possessions for Indianapolis. Four touchdowns and a field goal. Peyton Manning had a perfect rating in the first half on 16 of 18 for 327 yards and four touchdowns. And you know he wants more. No, really? Not Peyton. James wrapped up by Trevor Price as he came down the line. You know, Greg, that's an interesting statement, though. A lot of teams would pull back in a situation like this. Up 31 to 3, you're, you're just trying to milk the clock in the football game. But Peyton Manning, Tom Moore knows, he trusts him like he's never trusted anybody in his life. He'll dictate and manage the game the right way so they continue to go with their no-huddle offense. Manning over the middle, and he has a tight end, Joe Dean Davenport, to about the 37-yard line and a first down for Indianapolis. First half numbers, first half pace setters. Manning, of course. Look at those stats. Edron James, eight carries for 41 yards, and Brandon Stokely with three catches, two of them for touchdowns, 131 yards total. Marvin Harrison adding six catches for 127 and two. Manning, Wayne, and Wayne diving inside the 35 to the 32. Well, so much about their running game, that's all we heard. We need to run the football so we can throw it. Well, what happened is the Colts came out and threw a few passes. They had success, so they just kind of they kept going with it. And Edron James, they just give him a run here and there to give Peyton Manning some rest before the next pass. Boy, that total defensive number for Denver is so atypical from the Broncos that we saw during the regular season. James still on his feet and fights his way to the 25-yard line. Another first down for Indianapolis. This just kind of speaks volumes about this whole game. The Broncos in position to make the play. Just more one, two, energy, everything on the cold side. Edwin James shows it all on that run. 93 total yards for number 32 for the Colts. Manning looking, throwing, coming across the field. Harrison had a hand on it, couldn't grab it. Marvin Harrison has had himself some afternoon. Yes, he has. Look what he's done. Short pass over the middle. That makes the defense think they come up just a little. Now you worry about his speed. He gets wide open to the outside and what's all the shake in there. My gosh, how can you cover that? And then a good formation, good play. He's smart, knows he's not touched, gets up and scores the touchdown. James. Or rather, Dominique Rhodes and Rhodes to about the 22 or 21 yard line. You know, Peyton Manning was pretty definite about what went wrong the first time against these Denver Broncos. He said they would come up, show blitz, he would check out of his play to what he thought was the proper play, and then the Broncos would pull back on their blitz. Yeah, and that's what Greg, I made the point. He hates being dictated to, he said. So today, the no huddle, him calling plays faster, getting up the line of scrimmage letting the play go, not letting the Denver Broncos move around a lot on defense. Looking now at a third and six. Manning looking left, throwing left, and hits Stokely. Shakes a tackle to the 10 and wrestled down at the nine.
Peyton Manning get, again gets plenty of time, gets the space, and he throws a laser to the outside. Brandon Stokely against Kelly Herndon, one-on-one, -on -one, and Kelly Herndon so tough, only has one hand to use against the wide receivers today because of that cast on his left hand. Rhodes in the backfield gets the handoff to about the seven. Brandon Stokely coming into the action today had never laid claim to a 100 yard game receiving. He's got 144 on the afternoon. And most importantly, if you look at that clock, look what the Dim, I mean the Indianapolis Colts have done with the third quarter with this drive. Moving it down the field, eating up the clock, and now in position to get more points. Manning throwing. Incomplete inside the five-yard line. Marcus Pollard, the intended receiver. Well, you know, the play calling, Greg, we talked about it. Tom Moore, he walked about, oh, about six miles this morning <laughs> around the stadium. We got here, I don't know, three hours before the game. We saw him. I go, well, how far have you walked? Oh, about three games worth. <laughs> and it's, uh, I know it was a nervous week for all the coaches for the Indianapolis Colts. How are they going to rebound from two weeks ago? Manning on third and goal. Throws inside the five. Touchdown, Reggie Wayne. Touchdown pass number five on the day for Manning. He threw six at the end of September against the New Orleans Saints, a team record. This is a tight throw. But Peyton Manning just puts it right on target with a lot of velocity. The defense can't react fast enough. And Reggie Wayne, big and strong enough to get in the end zone. High snap. Hunter Smith got it down. And Vanderjack with the extra point. Five minutes, 19 seconds to play. Third quarter. The Colts, with memories of two weeks ago, fresh, lead at 38-3. The Indianapolis Colts have registered 33 points in Peyton Manning's first three playoff games. They've got 38 on the board today, and his five TD passes have him tied for third most in playoff history. This kick is going to roll into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. And Plummer and the Broncos will start at the 20-yard line. Marvin Harrison having himself a good old time today, as are the Colts. Funny, except He's America's ally in the war on terror. That's tonight on 60 Minutes. The crowd back into it, back and alive. I think they had a chance to rest up at halftime. Plummer to throw on first down over the middle. Across the 25 to the 27 is Shannon Sharp. Well, you watch Pete Manning. Everything he looks like, looks at in those, those pictures, he must go, yep, yep, I saw that one right. It's a perfect day for him. Tony Dungy and him talked during the offseason, and they both said that Tony Dungy said to Peyton Manning, you know what, no matter what we do during the regular season, nobody's going to care. It's what we do in the playoffs. Plummer had it batted out of his hands by Freeney. Thornton tried to pick it up and couldn't. The ball's still loose. Covered at the 20, but by whom? Colts. Rob Morris came away with the football. Dwight Freeney caused it all. Dwight Freeney, he is the fastest defensive player probably in the NFL, especially when you talk about defensive linemen. Jake Plummer never feels him coming around. He does it so fast. And the Colts just trying to pick it up and score more points. 
Boy, what a play by Dwight Freeney. What an effort. You know who knew he was going to get there? Blake Brockemeyer knew he was going to get there. And Manning. What do you want to bet? He's looking for a sixth touchdown pass. James in the backfield. And James to about the 17 yard line. Boy, what a day Peyton Manning has had. Well, what a day for the Colts, but Peyton Manning, no success in the playoffs. First drive hits Brandon Stokely for the touchdown, then Marvin Harrison over the middle. You've seen it already. He's smart. He gets up. Marvin Harrison against the safety. That's not fair. And then Brandon Stokely down the middle. That was the backbreaker right before halftime. Five touchdown passes worth 194 yards on second and seven. James. Inside the 10 yard line, it'll be first and goal. That's what Peyton Manning is chasing right now. I know Steve Young did that in the Super Bowl against the San Diego Chargers. And Daryl LaMonica did it just about every Sunday, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> but where do the Denver Broncos, you really got to dig deep as a player in a situation like this. You know your season's over. You got to get the courage and the will to keep fighting. James to the five as we go under the three minute mark for the third quarter. Isn't it interesting as we were talking to Tom Moore on Friday he said I've never been involved in so many close games in my life as we were this season. The scoreboard reads 38 to 3. Well yeah that's right but Tom Moore you got to remember too he kind of grew up in the NFL coaching with those Steeler teams that won four Super Bowl in six years. So there he got indoctrinated learning or playing in games where they won by quite a few points but this year Every team played a lot of close games. Second and goal. On the ground, Edger and James and wrapped up at the 10 yard line. Coming in on him was middle linebacker Al Wilson. We were talking about Steve Young. Back in the Super Bowl, the 49ers, Steve Young tied Darrell Monica's record with six TD passes. Niners beat the Chargers for Rice on the receiving end. Gee, that connection didn't hook up too often, did it? Third and goal. Pass inside the five, Harrison. And Harrison wrestled down at about the three. And Peyton Manning has no desire to come off the field. But he will. Well, that last play, Greg, that's something you saw a lot of two weeks ago. Marvin Harrison catching a short pass in four or five Broncos hitting him. Today, they've gotten him in more space. And when you give a guy with his talent space, it's hard to bring him down before he picks up a lot of extra yards. Vanderjack from 20 yards out. Vanderjack has not missed a kick all season long. It's 41 to 3, Indianapolis. A Monday on CBS. What's a nice girl like Ray's wife doing in a men's club, and why is it making Raymond so jealous? Don't miss the People's Choice nominee for TV's favorite comedy. Catch an all-new episode of Everybody Loves Raymond Monday on CBS. The Colts are having some fun. the nine yard line it's Ruben Drones and Drones tripped up as he crossed the 20 over to about the 26 yard line. New Year's has gone by but they may celebrate all over again in the city of Indianapolis. It's 41 to 3 Colts. Crowd has been up tempo since the opening kickoff. Plummer. 
And that's complete to Griffin. And Quentin Griffin across the 35 to the 38 yard line. That'll be a first down, and we're up to 35 seconds to play. You know, I think you and I were talking during the commercial. I just said, I, I, I can't believe what's happened here today. I thought there could be a turnaround where the Indianapolis Colts could win a hard-fought, tough game late in the fourth quarter, but never did you expect them never to punt the ball after three quarters and have 41 points. Portis wrapped up and dropped by Josh Williams. Josh Williams, born in Denver, Colorado, brings the pride of the running game for the Broncos to a halt as we come to the end of the third quarter. The Colts 41 and Denver 3. We're coming back to the RCA Dome after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Town yesterday. But the confidence hasn't played out the way they hoped it would on the field. Start of the fourth quarter. Give it to Portis on the right side. And he's cut down just as he crosses the 40 to the 41 by David Thornton, who has been all over the field defensively. Really the difference in this Colts defense today over what we saw two weeks ago, Greg. You said we watched it. We saw how much they hustled against the Denver Broncos offense, but it was almost counterproductive because the Broncos took advantage of it. Today, they have definitely been more disciplined. And we get a timeout. The Colts get a timeout with 14-28 to play in the fourth quarter. Peyton Manning with that celebration of a first playoff victory in his headlights now. Tennessee at Indianapolis on the 16th of January in 2000. The Titans won that one, 19-16. Eddie George right up the gut for a big touchdown against the Miami Dolphins in December of the year 2000. The Dolphins won it 23-17 in overtime. And Mike Vanderjack, wearing number 12 at the time, missed it. And then a year ago today against the New York Jets, the Colts were blown out by a score of 41 to nothing. You saw it at the beginning of our show today. Everyone in the world asking if Peyton Manning can ever win the big one. Hey, he could have thrown five touchdowns today. And if they'd have lost 38 to 35, a lot of people would have said, well, it's his fault. And that's not over exaggerating the point one bit. Plummer on third and seven. Going to go deep for Lilly. Picked off once again by Macklin. His second of the day. Across midfield. NFL.com. Manning and the Colts start at the Denver 49. Off the interception from Macklin, his second of the day. And this is Edron James. James finds a hole. 45. 40. First down. On David Macklin's interception, maybe nobody on the field happier than defensive coordinator Ron Meeks. Now, you've known Ron Meeks for a long time. Phil, tell me if you recognize this walk. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> He's carrying that ball back like he intercepted it. But Ron Meeks, we talked to him too, Greg, on Friday. He says, look, we got to redeem ourselves in this game. And I said something to him, and he goes, hey, this game's emotional for the coaches too. Because coaches, they get embarrassed about how their team plays. I know that's how they felt after getting manhandled two weeks ago. So... This is a big victory for the Indianapolis coaches, coaching staff, too. Edron James lost the football. And the Broncos say they've got it. They do. James had an arm grabbed and lost control. 
and Plummer in the offense back onto the field. 13-22 to play, fourth quarter. Thirteen twenty-two to play fourth quarter. Plummer calling signals at his own 38. And this is Portis. And Portis up and has enough for a first down. It has been a record-setting day for the Indianapolis Colts as far as postseason marks are concerned. Manning's five touchdown passes, his total yardage, the number of points scored, the total yards on offense, and that 87-yard pass play to Stokely. Longest play in Colts postseason history. Yeah, you look at this game, you go back to the Colts, getting the opening kickoff, marching down the field, scoring a touchdown. They got the crowd behind them, they got confidence, and they have, they have rode that ever since. Let's keep in mind, too, that this isn't exactly against a slouch defense. These Denver Broncos came in with the fourth rated defense in the National Football League during the regular season. Yeah, they were six against the pass, seventh against the run. The Denver Broncos defense has been as consistent this year as the Colts have been consistent on offense. So it was a terrific matchup. But again, you said it. Mike Shanahan, they worried about a hot quarterback in Peyton Manning. He got hot, and it just opened everything up for the football team. And again, I do believe crowd noise has is a factor in games like this. Well, I never heard the word physical used so much over a two-day span because there was constant discussion about the game two weeks ago, and they were simply more physical than we were, and we were more physical on the offensive line and on the defensive line, and, and we have to be more physical on Sunday. It's been the difference. Third and five. Plummer throws to the Lee, and that's complete for a first down to the 40-yard line. You know, you're, you're right, Greg. Ashley Lee down on the field took a hit right to that left hip. Well, he took a hit from Coach Shanahan after the game in Green Bay last weekend where in, in harsher terms than we can say, Mike Shanahan said, you got to do better. But, you know, you talk about being physical, and it's, it's so many things, and it really goes back to to even the offensive line, it's pass protection. Uh, we talked about it. Peyton Manning did not have time to make good decisions down the field when they played two weeks ago. You're more physical up front. All of a sudden, your quarterback gets more time. He gets smarter. His decisions are better, and he's a more accurate thrower. And we just saw every one of those factors are go in the Colts' favor today. Charlie Adams replaces Lillie on the field, goes across the field, and makes the catch to the 35 to the 30 and inside the 30 almost to the 25 of the Indianapolis Colts. Yeah Charlie Adams just to say something about him. He was thrown into action here late in the year and Mike Shanahan just said hey it's not too big for this guy. He just gets in there. He likes the competition doesn't go, get overwhelmed that it's you know professional football that it's going to be a playoff game and you can tell he wants the football and knows how to do something with it once he gets it. Ed McCaffrey took some serious shots last week in the season finale at Green Bay, not playing here due to concussion. And this is Portis. Portis inside the 20 yard line. Raheem Brock with the stop. Clock continues to move, coming up on 10 minutes to play in the fourth quarter. And you know, too, here will be something you'll, you'll hear about and read about. Did Mike Shanahan make the right decision? not playing all of his players last week in Green Bay. And look, he's the head coach of the football team. He's the one that's around him. He has a feel for what's right or wrong. And without question, he never hesitated last week or last night talking about his decision last week to rest a lot of his regulars. This is Portis. And Portis is cut down by Brock once again. Raheem Brock, just a second-year defensive end out of Temple, has had himself a magnificent game. In addition to his defensive play, he blocked the field goal. Well, number 79 on the outside is just going to come down the line of scrimmage or get inside the blockers and make the tackle. A lot of young Colt football players 
especially on defense, have grown up today. On third and five, Plummer throws the quick one over the middle, and that's complete to Ruben Drones to the 15-yard line, and that'll be enough for a first down. We remind our viewers that uh, 60 minutes will follow our NFL playoff action here today on CBS. Nice. <laughs> If they were winning, that those uniforms would look a whole lot better. First and ten. Plummer throwing, and that's complete to Groans, and Groans has run out of bounds at about the 12 by Walt Harris. You know, too, as I watch this game, I watched that play. Shannon Sharp was out on the left side. He was wide open. Jake Plummer did not see him. And you got to wonder, you know, Greg, and we talked about it with Shannon Sharp last night. Would this be, will this be his last season? And if they lost, would it be his last game? The best tight end in NFL history. The most receptions, most yards receiving, and most touchdowns. Second and seven. Plummer throws, and that is dropped by Portis. You know, we even asked Mike Shanahan, and Mike Shanahan said, well, Shannon Sharp came to me and said, what am I going to do? And Mike Shanahan said, you can play for the Denver Broncos as long as you want to and as long as you feel you can be competitive, and he has been every bit of that. He is the Broncos' all-time leader in receptions and touchdowns. And you see his milestones in a great, great future Hall of Fame career. That's right. There is no doubt Shannon Sharp is going to go to the Hall of Fame. Plummer throwing this side and there is Sharp and Sharp is run out of bounds at the eight yard line and that's short of a first down. Boy has been so good over the years. First he's putting a little block on Dwight Freeney before he goes out into the pass. He looks down the field. He knows there's nobody covering him. So the football could be coming his way. And he has caught so many of these passes in his career. You know the thing about Shannon is if only he wasn't just at a loss for words every once in a while. Fourth and two. Plummer looking throws end zone that is a touchdown. Rod Smith on the receiving end. As solid a staple for the D for the Denver Broncos on offense as you will ever see. Well good misdirection by the Denver Broncos. Jake Plummer coming all the way across the field. Rod Smith really did a good job of selling it. He took about three or four steps inside and then when he broke back outside he was open for the touchdown pass. Elam with the extra point and it is good. So the Denver Broncos find the end zone for the first time today with 704 to play here in the fourth quarter. Elam set to kick it to the near side with all of his defenders on the side. Popped up into the air and grabbed by Ricky Williams number 35 at the 44 yard line. That's where the Colts will put it in play after this. Montana number two, the man next to me here in the booth, number one. I'm not talking about Mike Gluck, our spotter. <laughs> Mike's got a heck of an arm, though. Brock Heward is the quarterback for the Colts. And Dominique Rose behind him, he gets the handoff. And he is hit at the 43-yard line. We go down to Armin. Thanks, Greg. You know, so many good things to say about Peyton Manning, but one of the really unresolved issues here in Indianapolis is the status of his contract. It's a six-year deal that's up at the end of this season. And a lot of questions as to whether the Colts can really sign him given the salary cap considerations, and I talked to Peyton briefly about it 
Friday after practice, he said, listen, Armin, I really don't want to comment now. I want to focus on this game. But I did talk to the team owner, Jim Ursay, before the game, and very strong, and I'm going to read it to you now. It's a quote. He said, it's not a big issue. We can franchise tag him and deal with the salary cap. We know what the numbers are, and we would make him the highest paid player in the league. He said, I never want to see him play anywhere else. He wants to win as much as I do. And Greg, we've certainly seen all of that here today. Armin, I was going to say, after a performance like it, it is, like we have seen today, there's just no way the Indianapolis Colts, you talk about not being able to afford a player, you can't afford to let a player like him get away. Well, they got to find, that's right, Greg. And even if it didn't go well today, they still had to keep him. They had to find a way to get him re-signed, and they will. There's never, uh, there's never a doubt about that. You don't let the best player arguably in the NFL get away on third and eight Brock Heward throwing out the side and that's complete to Reggie Wayne and Wayne inside the 30 yard line and a first down the Colts on their way to the end zone and on their way to Kansas City yeah you know too but I just want to go back to what Armin was talking about Peyton Manning it's over he's won a playoff game but of course now the story will be well so what can he win this game can he win the Super Bowl so it will never be quiet or it never will quiet down uh, totally until he wins a Super Bowl football game on first down we give us to Ricky Williams and Williams not much there the 27 yard line we mentioned that these Colts are on their way to Kansas City. That means that Tennessee will travel to New England. We'll be there Saturday night, 8 p.m. Eastern time. And then the Colts against Kansas City Sunday afternoon. Boy, what a difference in the Colts sideline from two weeks ago, huh? Yeah, it's, it's something. It's, uh, again, it just kind of tells us about the NFL what we saw all year long teams are so close and the difference between two weeks ago you could just turn it around in two weeks they did that here today this is Troy Walters and Walters holds on and ducks inside the 25 to the 24 as the clock moves up on four and a half minutes to play here in the fourth quarter but you know we follow the league we try to follow everybody and watch uh, who's playing well and who's not and I, I said it already earlier but one of the most consistent units I have seen in a long time in this league has been this Indianapolis Colts offense. It has been productive almost every single game of the year. And when they have to score late in the game, they've done it. They've had three or four tremendous comebacks. And don't forget, we talk so much about the New England Patriots and their terrific defense. The Indianapolis Colts scored 34 points on that defense. And we're stopped on the one yard line as the game ended. Well, we were talking about the turnaround in this Colt defense and the fact that in three of their last four games here at home, they've allowed 31 or more points coming in today. That didn't bode well for a Denver team that had been playing good football down the stretch and well, then, of course, hit that last, that, that last game in Green Bay, which was meaningless to them. Well, it shows you what a team game is. In other words, sometimes the Colt defense plays well because their offense kind of dominates play and gets everything on the Colts side. And when they do that, the defense can free will a little. They're about getting pressure on the quarterback to create turnovers, and it snowballs for them. But when they do give up points, that's a screenplay. When they do give up points, it's because they just can't control the ball like they want to. Ball goes over on downs. We have 3.13 to play in the fourth. First down. Clinton Portis, his 17th carry of the day. You know, Greg, I know I've said this before, but, you know, we talked to Shannon Sharp last night, and, and we all commented when he left the room. I said, nobody in this league, all the players we talked to, Shannon Sharp has the best feel for what's really going on, and he can express it, and we, we talked about it, uh, when his playing days are over, there is no doubt he is going to go into the broadcast business and he's going to be terrific at it. You know, he loves football. He likes following everything. He's a student of the game. 
Quentin Griffin breaking through to midfield. And he loves to talk. Well, that's that's <laughs> always a good combination when you when you want to go into broadcasting. I remind you once again, 60 minutes to come once we wind down here at the RCA Dome. And we're coming up on two minutes to play. And, you know, Mike Shanahan, Greg, you talked about it too. He thinks Shannon Sharp is going to come back. My guess is I, I don't think he will. I, I just That's just my guess. He, he did not lead us to believe one way or the other last night. Two minutes to play. Two minutes left in Denver's season. Indy is looking ahead to Kansas City. Means to him to finally win the playoff game. But uh, Tony Dungy, you know, he's been tagged with... Uh, some burdens of his own. Quentin Griffin left side and brought down close to the 35 yard line. Sure, first it was, well, can you get a team to advance and can your team score any points and yeah. score any touchdowns? Then he was piggybacked along with Peyton Manning well, about not being able to register a postseason victory. You know what? You put. Those two people, you, you back them up against the wall, and they reacted the right way. They just, they were professional about it. Of course, deep inside, it has to burn. It, it's something they wanted to prove to everybody they could get done, and they did it together. Griffin again. And by the time the next play, the next ball is snapped, we'll be under a minute. Tony Dungy permitting himself a little bit of a smile every now and then. And is even going to be comfortable enough to take the headset off. One last tribute from the crowd. Griffin right side and dragged down inside the 25 yard line and Mike Shanahan is not going to allow another snap. The Indianapolis Colts move on. Peyton Manning 22 of 26 for 377 yards and five touchdowns. What a fitting postseason performance for the co-MVP of the league, for Phil Simms and Armin Katayan. Greg Gumbel saying so long from the RCA Dome, our final score. The Colts 41 and the Broncos 10. Stay tuned for Jim Nance and the Subway Post Game Show. Thanks for joining us from Indianapolis, everyone. You've been watching the NFL on CBS.